and welcome to the Fortress of Comic News, episode 167. I am one of your hosts, Chris, alongside the mic. Hey. Um, we just got we just got unlimited minutes from Zoom. <laughs> Whatever that means. Apparently, Zoom is the giver of time. Hmm. <laughs> Zoom giveth and Zoom taketh Zoom away. Taketh away. Uh, welcome to the show, everyone. Today we have a very special guest, Javon Jordan. We're going to talk about his awesome uh, third installment of the Sav, and uh, stick around to hear about it because it's man, it's it's raw, it's it's evil, it's awesome. It's a tale of vengeance and gore, and yeah, and you can see a couple of the cool covers behind me. If you're, yeah, if you're watching it's TV. it's some good action comics. Definitely check yeah, it out. It's awesome. Uh, not a whole lot of news, so we're just gonna just gonna shoot the shit a little bit, you know. Yeah, Been yeah. Not that. not a lot going on in the comics world this week. Yeah, yeah we, <laughs> right. There's a lot going on in the world. <laughs> well, Chris, we did get comics back, right? So I mean, there is like the we're back to the regular scheduled comics once a week, so that's good to have a little bit of the normality back. Yeah, and then. It got taken away from us by DC, which we'll talk about later. Uh, yeah, what's up, DC? <laughs> you guys, you know, we do uh, something was coming. I mean, the the conversations leading up to it was kind of weird, and then yeah. yeah, I know it's still um, a a big contention with shop owners too that you know they're open and diamonds distrib- this distributing, mm-hmm. but. Uh, yeah, Marvel's not really putting out a whole lot right now. And it's, uh, like our retailer said, that's uh, over 35% of his business. Hmm. He's not getting right now. So that's kind of frustrating, too, for a lot of comic retailers. So they're just frustrated left and right right now. Yeah, they're putting them through the ringer. Or it's like, this is an industry that really had no leeway. <laughs> you know, especially when no. you when you work off weekly inventory. You know, it's... Uh, it's kind of interesting, but uh, I guess we'll talk about. I mean, there's no TV or movie news. Um, I've been, I'm still watching Avatar: The Last Airbender. I'm almost done with season one. The show's great. It's like everybody's been saying. If everybody's saying it's good, it's usually good, and it's it's been really good. Um, I don't. Did you ever watch it? Oh, it, here and there. Uh, my two stepsons love it, um, but I don't know. It just never clicked with me. My the reason I watch it though is Appa, the giant flying bison. Yeah, he's pretty fantastic. Is probably the best character. Like I people say, oh, the last Airbender is the main character. No, he's not. It's Appa. We're, let's be real. Because that I don't I've never seen all the seasons. If something happens to that bison, I'll be so upset. I'm waiting for uh M Night Shemalama Ding Dong to make a movie about it. Again. <laughs> We don't talk about that. All I remember, I don't, I don't remember much. I just remember a trailer, and uh, yeah. and it was like the Dragon Ball movie that never happened. You know, it was like I was gonna say it. Um, so after seeing Dragon Ball Evolution in theaters, the movie that doesn't exist, yeah. um, I saw the trailer for that, and I was just like, I never even watched this show, and I know that this is a travesty. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've been hurt once. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it was Green Lantern. We all have that one movie. Mine was Green Lantern, and I'll never forget. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't like you go into the theaters to see Dragon Ball. That's rough, man. I, dude, I was so ready for that movie to be good. Yeah, so ready. Yeah, we, we all were, and then uh, and then they realized. We shouldn't touch this fringe. <laughs> and then they find the whitest yep. boy band looking fucking Goku. guy on the planet to play Was Goku. Is that Goku or yeah, Goku or Goku? Yeah, it's because it it loosely is doing the Dragon Ball manga, not the and sets up Dragon Ball Z. And Piccolo's in that one too, right? Didn't they like paint his skin or something? Well it's it's King Piccolo. Oh. Uh from Dragon Ball. Uh and at the end we get the egg for uh, p- the piccolo we know and love. Oh, um, and a movie that never happened. So, wait. So, <laughs> they actually set up like a franchise. They had like a yeah. Like they, a they 
because especially, I mean, you're not, you're what, a couple years younger than me, right? Yeah. Like so if you remember when it, it came out like years after the uh, Japanese version came out in America and it got huge and was bounced around a bunch and they thought it was going to be like a huge uh, a movie thing where they're going to make like three or four movies. I remember reading all up about it and be like, they, the guy they got to play Goku was apparently a big deal at the time. Like he was the guy that was going to become huge. Oh, it was he's going to be the movie that like yeah. bounced him into superstardom. <laughs> and it was yeah. Oh. And then obviously, like you know, critics hated it, but even back then, you were just like, okay, it's I get it. Of, it's a uh, Dragon Ball Z movie. Not to not to be on a negative note before we jump into this interview, but speaking of uh, hot trash movies, uh, Josh Trank came. Uh, he I, I forgot what he said, but he oh. Oh, he, said, yeah. he said he wanted uh, he wanted uh, Sue Storm to be African American, but it was like it, it, that. That being aside, of like what he wanted for the character, like stop coming up with excuses of why your movie sucked. You made a bad movie, Josh Trank. <laughs> like stop blaming everybody. And it's been how many years? Like five years since that Fantastic Four movie. Like, dude, just let it go. <laughs> like, why are you still it, talking about this movie? It, it, and would that have changed it at all? Like, I still haven't seen that movie, so I don't know. No. But, like, the, the does, the, does the skin thing. color of the, the character matter so much in terms no. of quality of the movie? No, because Michael B. Jordan was uh, um, the Human Torch, and he was yeah. fantastic. That Like, the casting, I don't think, was the bad part about that movie. It was the plot. It was no. the actual story <laughs> yeah and i forget the woman's name but the woman that played sue storm was like she's another one that was like on her way up she was in um oh man house of cards right and oh uh, uh, uh rooney mara or something like that something but she, she was Kate she mara. was really good in that show uh for the season she was there or two seasons yeah. she was there mm-hmm. and then this was like her big break and obviously is what it is but like Michael B. Jordan's fantastic. He's an amazing actor. Doesn't matter. But I don't think if you just switch Sue Storm to a woman of color, that makes that movie amazing. No, because <laughs> it's it's a trash movie. <laughs> yeah, like it's it. Yeah. <laughs> you gave Doctor Doom had like robes on. Do you remember that? Like, well, I guess I still haven't watched it. So, oh, you never watched it? No, oh. I. So I remember when it was coming out. Um, Kevin Smith had him on Smodcast. It was going to be yeah. a three part. And it and sounded he, awesome. Yeah, and he told us it sounded amazing. I'm like, this is going to be so good. And then it, the trailers really really started hitting. I started le- hearing from people I know and trust. Mm-hmm. And mind you, this is like mid or like early uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. So the, the the bar is very high for this show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, people started going like, just don't. Just, just don't do it. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm going to skip this one. Because there was a time in my life where if it was a comic book movie, I went no matter what. Mm-hmm. That time is not now. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I didn't. I don't, I don't know. I went in socks. I always think I was hyped up about the podcast uh, interview, yeah. like you said. And then Josh Trank went into hiding. Yeah. And now he's and, coming back out. Yeah. And Probably because yeah. everybody wants their own director's cut. And now he's going to call for the Trank cut. Because that's going to fix that movie. That movie. Oh, God. Anyways, so um, yeah, with that, we'll leave you on that high note. I'm gonna leave you on another high note, real oh. quick, because I oh, watched yeah. something this week. Oh, what did you watch? I didn't know about this. Uh, I finally watched that Epstein documentary. Oh, I've been avoiding it still, but what did you think? It's okay. It's really well done. Mm-hmm. Um, I could critique a few little things here and there, but I think all in all, it's a really great documentary that tells a harrowing story from the perspective of women who unfortunately got uh, molested. I will say if you are a of weak constitution or a weak stomach, do not watch this. Uh, they don't really show anything, but the conversations can be graphic and tough to listen to at times. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than that, it's really, really well done. And I think important for most people to watch because it went beyond just what we know from the past few years. Oh, like this was a thing that was happening. First, they explained how he got his money and how he got his money is fucked up. But, uh, (laughs) the, the whole 
thing with the underage women goes back to like the early nineties. All I know is I, I remember like I, I went down this rabbit hole one day of like who he is and what he did. And they I, it said he got some esteemed position teaching when he wasn't even a teacher mm-hmm. <laughs> or something like that. It was like, why are you putting this guy who isn't qualified in a position and why is he making so much money? And well, you get these powerful people. So after that stint, uh, he ends up going to work for an, a company that does like Wall Street stuff. And then after that, works for another company that does similar stuff. Um, you get the two guys who hired him after that teaching stint. And they, mm-hmm. bo- like, they both start their interview with, the biggest regret of my life was ever giving him a chance. Wow. Because they both had opportunities where they found out he lied mm-hmm. and were ready to fire him. But because he was so talented at what he did and because he was so good at persuading people that he was given a second chance, which then made him a multi-billionaire. Wow. Um, That's insane. It, yeah. It's a tough watch, but I, I, as a documentary, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was just a well-crafted story that um, really the best part about it is they found some, some of the women that uh, he affected and they told the story mostly. So it was cool. really done from that perspective. Yeah, I'm glad good. they did that. So. Um, well, without further ado, we're going to go talk to Jay and about his book, The Sav, and uh, we'll see everybody on the other side. And we're back. I want to welcome to the show uh, another very special guest. Welcome, everybody. Javon Jordan. Welcome to the show, Jay. What's good, man? Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. Um, you do have a Kickstarter up right now that we're going to talk about in a second here. Uh, that it's it's very successful, the third installment of your uh, the Sav. But uh, before we get into that, we like to do an origin story. Um, I know you you collect comics as well. I see you always post about like comics you're collecting. So have you always been a comic book fan or what? I have ever since I was ever since uh, the animated series, you know, like the X Men animated series and Spider Man. That's what really got me into it. So mm-hmm. I've been a fan. I was lucky enough to be be raised during that area area of like uh fox kids you know where where we had the all the dope animated series and so it kind of like evolved into you know i didn't know what comic books were obviously then but but then i went to stores and started seeing seeing oh whoa this is this is the same dude that's on my cartoons you know what i mean and and it just clicked and, and i've been a fan ever since yeah, that's uh, Chris and I came up in that era too. It's like you know, yeah. Ninja Turtles cartoon, X Men, yeah, and the anime yeah. series. It was all like high quality stuff too. And then you find a book with those characters on it, and you're like, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, um, so mind blow. At what at what point did you were you like, hey, maybe I should write my own story? You had your own story to tell. Um, I like uh. Cause I do music too. So I'm, I've been writing, you know, I know how to write and yep. I just really wanted to, you know, I, I was spending thousands and thousands and thousands on books, you know, comic books. And, and eventually I was just like, well, I'm spending all this money, man. I might as well try to make my own, you know what I mean? And expand yeah. my, expand my artistic prowess, you know? And, and so I, I just sat down and wrote, I, I was like, what, what would I think is cool? What, you know, cause obviously we grew up in the same era which means spawn and young bloods and all that crazy stuff too you know the ultra violent stuff and i was like well that's what i like and you know that that it really draws me so i just wrote and just put little pieces together of stuff i like and i was like okay and i think i can do this that's that's where the sav came out yep yep i will because with the sav i was i was always like man us natives we get like some st- some stupid silly stereotypical heroes you know what i mean i'm like oh man i need i can't i I don't even like these guys you know what i mean so i wanted to do something that i could like and push and i know all my homies would like and be like okay yeah this is this is way better than you know fools and tights and (laughs) and war bonnets you know yeah i get that yeah for sure so you actually answered my next question but the other part of it is um uh being having a heritage of native american uh in you um is this based on something that is from something from your past or your your people's past or something like that or 
Is this completely so, just something you came so up his, with? So his origin story is loosely based on the Marias massacre, where uh, where uh, rogue army soldiers went in and killed two hundred innocent tribal members. You know, mm-hmm. so I kind of wanted to do something in their memory, and you know, like you know, make it so it wasn't in vain. You know, keep it keep it in people's ears. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people don't even know about this. You know, no, I didn't. I didn't until I read about it. So it's it's cool that you. So did. yeah, I just want to you know keep it in people's you know in the back of their minds like yeah this really did happen in history and you know obviously the sap is a, is a superhero you know he's it's not that's not a true story but you know i kind of like built him off of like little american or native american folklore here and there and mm-hmm. you know just combined it all into a beast of a character uh i think one of the one of the favorite because the first couple issues um if we can talk about what i mean I, I, might spoil it, but the, I think the um the spirit axe was probably my favorite part of all that yeah. was the best scene. I mean, it's such a badass character. And like, like you said, he, to bring a character that, you know, gets vengeance back for his people is like, and he does it in such a brutal way. He's like Rambo, you know, it's like, he's yeah. like back about it. No, yeah. He's with, he's with it. He's with the action. Yeah. He's not like Batman. Or it's like, Oh, I can't, hurt, I can't hurt anybody. You know, like I have yeah. he's like, no, he's like chopping scalps off. <laughs> don't even don't even think about it just do it you know yeah yeah it's awesome and i i really like the the first issue you set it up as a uh, you know grandfather telling a tale to his uh i'm assuming grandchildren yeah, and yeah. um you really do place it as he's almost a a spirit or a, a demigod that lives on forever so you can hit any time period you want yeah um, so I'm assuming you have a long-term plan for this beyond just like a couple of issues, correct? Oh yeah. I got, I got, I already have, I have stories written for different eras, you know, cause like different eras have different crazy things that happen. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So I kind of want to, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge history buff. I love history. That was my favorite subject in school. I, I'm, I'm probably, you guys would be like, man, this fool has the most senseless knowledge of history. <laughs> I've ever met, you know what I mean? Because I just retain it and retain it, and I and, and I can build off it. So it's like, it's just uh, I want to be able to just place him, you know, like in different little places, you know. And obviously, you know, he's a he's not like a real human, so you know, we'll let the the humans take credit for for what he was doing mm-hmm. behind the scenes, you know. Mm-hmm. So where do you where where does the character pick up in the third installment? Then I mean, we've we've seen his origin and and him getting. <laughs> so the third the third issue the one that we're we're dropping right now on kickstarter he uh it's after the whole the whole uh blood fest that happened at the at the fort warden and so uh he's uh the salve's good you know he's in a good place right now building building a relationship with a with a, a tribe of like natives from different tribes that combined into one you know and so he's just enjoying life right now but but he doesn't know that the general didn't die that day, you know? Mm. And so, uh, you know, I don't want to spoil too much, yeah. you know, cause there's, there's a lot of, I have a lot of, you know, I, I, I can put it out there, you know, and then, but I want to keep secrets and stuff hidden. So when people read it and they're like, Whoa, what, what the, I was not expecting this. And I also, I'm a, a big Easter egg fan too. So I hide Easter eggs throughout my comics, you know what I mean? So like, <laughs> You'll go, you'll go through this issue and then be able to like tie back to issue one or tie back to issue, you know, two or, or like in the future I have, you know, I'm putting Easter eggs for future stuff. So then like later on when you're reading, you'll be like, dang, whoa, you know, cool. that was foretold. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So when you did the Sav one shot and he's uh, fighting uh, some sort of Egyptian God, what, is this hinting that there's going to be more um, of these demigods or gods roaming around from the fight and not just other humans to slaughter? <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 There's a, there's a big, uh, I, I have a big play into, into, uh, in motion with, all, with everything I'm doing, cool. you know, it's, it's, uh, the ones, the one shots will connect to the main story arcs and, and vice versa. And then, you know, and then, you know it's gonna lead up to something crazy yeah that's awesome. awesome i like i like the development of the character too like where we go from the uh the origin of like you know he's 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 just coming back to take vengeance to where we are with the the battle with the other demigod it's like he 
he's a little more snarky and like you know he's he's been around the block a few times yeah 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 he's yep. got that attitude to him of like okay you See, know, that's that's why this. i wanted to do that because yeah. uh because you know with with obviously with this first story arc it's just him coming right out the womb ready you know mm -hmm. action you know like he hasn't had time to develop his brain and and really know what's going on and like and so i wanted to do the one shot so people can actually see how how he really is like his his attitude and his cockiness and his mm -hmm. and his you know like oh i'm the shit i'm the sad i can <laughs> yeah, do whatever the hell i want you know what yeah. i mean like so i wanted that's why i did the one shot prior so people can be like okay so he's not just this one-dimensional brutal ass kick everyone slay everyone character right. he actually is funny and has wits and you know can clown around a little bit yeah yeah i definitely like that now the the first uh, issue and the one shot are all black and white. Are you planning on going back and coloring those so that they collect yes. a little bit nicer? Um, okay, for sure, for sure, issue one because I definitely want to do a trade after the story arc is done. So I definitely want to go back and color that up. Definitely, definitely. And then, uh, and then if I, you know, when I probably do another one shot, I'll, I'll probably go back and color the Savra Sistine and then you know try to try to bundle them together or something. Cool. Cool. Yeah, and it looks like, I mean, you still have, what, like a week left currently on Kickstarter, but you guys are well above your, <laughs> your goal. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised how, how crazy this one just, like, started rolling. This one yeah. was rolling. Yeah. And the, um, and I, I have behind me a couple of the alternate covers. I love the, the Dark Knight uh, homage. With the, oh yeah, the, I'm a Frank. I'm a Frank Miller whore, dude. I love yeah. anything Frank. <laughs> Frank you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, like I, I logged out earlier and I was like, Chris, did you see the? Did you see the Frank Miller cover? He's like, No. What are you I'm like, Dude, you gotta get this. Like, <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, have you seen your your fan base growing from each issue? Like, oh yeah, that, yeah. Uh, tremendously. Yeah. That's really cool. And not just as it growing is people are just getting more down with it. You know what I mean? Like really, really supporting, you know what I mean? Like people that were only getting say the, the main issue last time are like buckling down. Cause they know I'm not stopping. You know what I mean? And right. I think they know they're, they're down and ready for the ride. That's awesome. Really cool. So for anyone that jumps on it today, are there stretch goals that you're trying to get to right now? Uh, right now? Yeah. If we get to, Right now, we're trying to hit ten thousand. That's the last stretch goal I have in mind. Obviously, if if we surpass that within the next week, then I'm going to come up with other things. You know what I'm saying? I like to spoil my my supporters as much as I can. So, yeah, if we hit ten thousand, I'm going to I'm going to hire some one of the biggest artists I can find to do a, a special print for everybody, and it'll be you know number to the, just the amount of backers that have backed the issue. Awesome. That's awesome. You're almost there, less than a thousand away. I know. Seven days. So if that doesn't entice everyone to go out and uh, back it, I don't know what will. Because yeah. besides it being an awesome story, like, <laughs> yeah, it's got some cool stuff going on there. Yeah. So the, the book's awesome. Everybody should go check it out. It's on Kickstarter right now. Uh, Jay, if people want to follow you uh, moving forward, even after this campaign's done, where's the best place for them to go? Uh, you could go to my, my website. That's where I have all my music, my comic book stuff. It's illustuminati.com, I-L-L-E-S-T-U-M-I-N-A-T-I.com. And uh, and then also on Instagram, it's all just illustuminati. Just just throw me in Google. I'll, I'll pop up everywhere. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, man. Thanks for being on the show, and uh, good luck with the, with the last seven days. I'm, I'm sure you'll hit the goal here. And I appreciate y'all having me. Definitely. I definitely appreciate y'all. No problem, man. You're welcome back anytime. Yee. And we're back. Awesome. So go check that out. Seven days left on the Kickstarter. Awesome. Awesome. Alternate covers. Um, there's that Dark Knight uh, Returns reference cover, Frank Miller reference cover. If you want it, go pledge. Get that, get that cover because it's awesome. Yeah. And I'm, I can't wait to read the third issue, so I'm sure you guys can't either. And get that print. Get that print. Yeah. That print. <laughs> get that print. Um, okay, so comic news. Uh, DC is being... DC as disappointing comics is what it stands for this week. Um, I just came up with that one all by myself. 
Uh, they they canceled the upcoming uh, Kate Spencer Manhunter comic. Honestly, the you know DC has been pushing the Manhunters for a long time. Uh, it's surprising to me that they're going to touch the Manhunters after I, I thought we just had a. I thought we had a. I think Venditti, either Venditti or Morrison, did some Manhunter stuff in their recent run of Green Lantern. I thought. It might have been Venditti, but uh, it's it was going to spin out of that event Leviathan. Oh, okay, um, she's yeah. obviously a big part, and the original yep. Manhunter is a big part of that too. This okay. seems par for the course for right now because you're seeing both sides, um, and I'm sure indies are doing it as well, kind of canceling ancillary books that aren't really all that important um, because they got to cut money somewhere. Um, this was one that I was the only thing I'm shocked about this is that it was outright canceled. Yeah. Because you remember that man bat book we talked about like for Mm -hmm. what, two lifetimes ago. A long time ago. Uh, And they just came out saying that that's been postponed indefinitely, basically saying they're going to resolicit it down the line. Um, So like we're, we're seeing those all the time now. And yeah, this one was weird because there isn't even a like resolicit plan. It's just, nope, it's done. You know what um, makes me? You know how DC loves the loves the time, like, and Marvel does it too. Like they they like to time their exposure of characters with comics to when a movie comes out. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering, is do you think there's a chance? I mean, we've already got a list of like there's a thousand villains in the Batman movie, but is there a chance that we could maybe see some Man Bat in in the in the Matt Reeves Batman movie? I if, I would think at best you get a cameo of a uh, Kurt. Yeah, yeah, Kirk Langstrom. Um, that maybe sets him up for like the second or third movie. That would be amazing if they did. And and I'm just thinking because of like remember remember the Planet of the Apes trilogy and all the amazing stop motion. I mean, they got Andy Serkis right. Can you imagine Andy Circus Man Bat? Oh man, I'm getting so excited right now. Just take my money. Holy that God. would be awesome. I mean, especially yeah. because, like, okay, the the villains they have right now, uh, like all 120 of them. <laughs> yeah. Roll call. You got Catwoman. You got Riddler. You got uh, Penguin. You got Iceman. Um, Mister Freeze, right? I think. Well, no, in in this movie. Uh, Riddler. Riddler. Um. Penguin. And I think they are they. Oh yeah, Two Face was the other one. Oh yep, Harvey Dent. Yep. So they got all these people cast for something big in this movie. Mm-hmm. But my thing is, is like, other than Joker, you basically have all the ones that we've done, yeah, ten times over. Right. A man bat story would be cool. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And, it would, and, and it would, I don't know. I think it would be cool. Yeah. It would add such a cool supernatural element to it. And it's like, yeah, it, maybe it doesn't work in your first movie, but like the second or third movie, that'd be awesome. Like, yeah. Because, uh, like, yeah, like you said, the supernatural element, because like Batman has always been like rooted in the real world and, and he's like, giant bat, that doesn't exist. And he goes around investigating it and he's like, oh shit. <laughs> well, and you know, what a mind fuck, too, if like the first movie they're saying is going to be more of a detective movie and more, right. you know, you know going for that version of Batman and then in film two, it's just like, and then a giant bat appears. <laughs> giant bat. <laughs> Batman versus the giant bat. You know, I would be so down for that. I love, I mean, man, bat's a cool character. I yeah. like, like we said, when that book got announced, I don't know if I could read a book just about him, but I like right. him as a villain. Well, they, they, I feel like they could do so much with the character. Like Batman's reputation is being poo pooed because like, this giant bat is going around at night killing people and he's got to like, Oh, just, just watch yeah. the animated series again. Yeah, Just watch the animated series episode. Like just that's do right. that because yeah. that's basically what it is. Everybody's just like, there's a giant bat killing it's people. Bat. It's be Batman. Batman. He's like, no, no, that one's man bat. <laughs> <laughs> Mon bat. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a completely different. It's not what I'm, I'm doing the Batman thing, you know? <laughs> I'm like, Oh, okay. So you're the one going that's around tough. eating people. Anyways. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so long story short, uh, Manhunter got canceled. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Also, DC uh, cuts ties with diamond distributors, and retailers are not happy. So nice job, DC. Um, I, I think what makes me upset is, you know, if there's another pub, smaller publisher doing this, like we talked about, it'd be fine. But DC, uh, you got a reputation to uphold. You also have a, you're setting a standard for other publishers, right? So, I mean, people look up to DC Comics. So as far, as far as what to do with their product. But anyways, I'll let you. I, I just want to be clear on past comments that I know I have made. Uh, I am all for a second distributor popping up. Right. I don't necessarily, I didn't necessarily want this to be how it happened. I wanted like another company to come in, distribute comics and provide competition for diamond. Mm -hmm. What this does um, that's really pissing off uh, retailers and I'm going to go back to the Alterna leaving Diamond from a while back. One of the problems with Alterna leaving Diamond is when retailers do their orders, they order so much out of the book. The way that shops can take a chance on smaller books, like an Alterna book, like a, a Mad Cove book, or one of those books that's in the hundreds of pages after uh, Dark Horse, DC, Image, all them. Mm -hmm is by ordering bulk of these other of DC Marvel and all them. And then your discount gets bigger. So you can take a shot on this book and maybe order five or six or whatever and say, well, if they don't hit, I still made a ton of money off of these books. And that's how a lot of these books got into shops, especially the one that we frequent or the one I frequent every week, the one you used to frequent before you moved. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when Alterna left, it was just like, okay, like it's, I don't have to take shots in their books. That was kind of the retailer's perspective on it. And he goes, I'm sorry, you can't get it through me, but it doesn't make sense. With DC leaving, <laughs> well, now we're talking about another, we talked earlier about uh, Marvel not putting out books right now. And that's like 35 to 40% of their business. Yeah. Another 35 to 40%, if not more of his business. And I'm sure it fluctuates store to store is DC. Yeah. So now if you take away, let's say it's 40%, you take away 40% of your order from DC. We're getting really deep into order and business talk here. Uh, <laughs> you take 40%, that's less that he's ordering through diamond and that brings down his discount overall. And he makes less money off of his books, meaning he makes less of a profit off of his book. And he has to make so much to keep the overhead, to keep, you know, himself employed, to keep the electricity going, blah, 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 blah. That's the unknown circumstance here. But what I don't know, and I believe you don't as e either, is what Marvel's, or I'm sorry, what DC's discount is through this new system. I mean, if DC's giving guys like 100, 200% profit margins, I'm sure that they don't care. But judging by like some pretty big dis uh, shops, especially online shops, putting up sales with discount codes, DC sucks. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that the discounts aren't great. Yeah. They're probably a standard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's uh it's wild. I don't I I feel like DC has been trying to get out for a while and they kind of use this whole thing to be like we could they're like trying to spin it as like it's out of their control, but it's obviously like They've had someone, someone in the, and not, I don't even think this is coming from Mark, because if, if this is a marketing uh, decision, you screwed DC. I mean, like, you have so many diehard fans, and this is not a good way to market your product. This is coming from, like, someone that looks at the numbers, wants to make more money, and has no idea, any, like, what those comics are doing for the community and for those local comic book stores. You know, this is like somebody saying, like, we need more profits, and, uh, this diamond is getting too much of a discount. So we're just going to, we'll figure it out. <laughs> it's like, that's, that's what happened. Well, I read a great op-ed on this and because of personal experience this past week, I know that a lot of people don't understand what an op-ed is. Um, so a good op-ed should have a lot of statistics behind it to prove its point, not just say, this is what I think. And you should believe it too. Uh, this op ad was saying that they feel like this DC decision was kind of throwing the gauntlet down on Marvel. And their point was that if we distribute on our own and you have to distribute through diamonds and stores aren't getting the discount 
because they're ordering our stuff, they're not going to be able to do all the jump through all the crazy hoops that Marvel puts in front of them to get variants and discounts and all this right. other stuff. Mm-hmm. We all know about the order X amount more of this and you did black widow and you'll get an exclusive variant and all this stuff. And they felt like this was a, like I said, throwing down the gauntlet on them to be like, okay, now you can't do your crazy stuff on our backs. Let's see how you do. And that's an interesting theory. Uh, but I, I just, I want to see what the raw numbers are in six months and see if they're, it's right or not. Because a lot of people feel that Marvel gets a bump in sales because they do these crazy things. Mm-hmm. Buy 600 copies, get this variant. Yep. And I'm curious at how much that really is going to affect it. But I mean, that could be another thing of them just saying, let's do it. Like show me that you don't need us to survive or to, to, or actually show that your numbers are really better than ours. Uh, I'd be interested to see it. I, I think it's a, a cool theory moving forward. And, you know, in a couple of months, maybe we'll address this again to see how it uh, turns out. But I just wish everybody would stop being weird and let the local comic shops have their comics easily and <laughs> get them to us easily. <laughs> be like, it's not like they had such a bad system to begin with. At the end of the day, yes, we have AT, it was no Warner Brothers. Yeah. Which I believe it's owned by AT&T, so I think I had that right. AT&T yeah. versus Disney. Right. And caught in the middle are these shops that Marvel and DC both claim to want to support and want to have out there and do all this stuff for. DC did an amazing job of raising money to help these shops, and now it feels like they're pulling the rug out from under them. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, hopefully, everybody is wrong, uh, and this turns out to be the best for everyone. I just my hope is with the comic shops because they just had a two month delay of nothing. They finally start getting books back, then this is kind of thrown on them. Yeah. Yeah, sucks. And that that being said, we let's talk about the comics we read. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bat- Batman Gotham Knights number seven. I I I picked up where Mark Russell did. So, I believe you read that as well. I'm behind on that, so I have okay. not. Um, uh, there was an issue revolving around uh, uh, Killer Moth and his origin, and we uh, Batman kind of goes through like his interactions with Killer Moth and. Uh, there's this there's this whole situation where um, he thinks Killer Moth is dead, but it actually uh, comes to find out the guy who found the dead Killer Moth was Killer Moth himself, trying to like get out of the life of scum and villainy. Um, yeah, but it's a good issue, and uh, I like what Mark Mark Russell does these little things in his writing that's like a nod towards comic book, you know, like Batman fans. So that's pretty cool. Um, Shazam number twelve, which was uh, I didn't. <laughs> Didn't realize it until I opened it up, but it was a filler issue. Um, yeah, it was. It wasn't a bad filler issue. I mean, uh, who's writing? Jeff Loveness, right? And Brandon Peterson art. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was surprising <laughs> because yeah. I expected a Jeff Johns issue to do right, the story. The last, yeah, the last issue they left off. We found Superboy Prime, right? In, yeah. in the Monster World, I think, right? Something like that. It's been so yeah. long. And it was like, oh my god, what is Superboy doing there? <laughs> and then it was like, here's a filler issue. And this actually, the uh, the events of this one take place before Shazam number one. Um, it was fun. It was a team up with Batman, uh, where Shazam and Batman take on Scarecrow. It was a pretty cool issue. Yeah, it was a cool look into the innocence of Billy. Yeah. Um, kind of the idea that, and it does lead in pretty well to the series as a whole of like Billy or Shazam doesn't have any good villains. He yeah. fights a crocodile in a right a tuxedo or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then him kind of getting a taste of teaming up with Batman and what Batman's villains are like. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really yeah. good. Mm-hmm. I, I was surprised it wasn't Jeff John's issue and I wanted more of that story. Right. But I thought this was a great issue for a filler. It, it was funny because in the notes I wrote, I wrote, ah, oh, filler issue because I opened it up and I was like, and I immediately wrote first note, filler issue, meh. And then I, and then I read through the issue and I deleted that comment. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, this wasn't so bad. <laughs> so like the realization of like, okay, this is actually some, there's some good content here. 
uh, deceased at World's End one and two because Chris keeps talking about those books, so I'm 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 in it now. Uh, Tom Taylor's writing those bad boys. Uh, yeah, I so read those as well. the The whole anti life war is happening. Um, basically, the remaining Justice League talks to uh, uh, Black Adam. They're like, "Hey, you handled the situation in Kendak pretty pretty quickly and efficiently." what did you do? And come to find out he killed like half his population <laughs> immediately. Uh, so the justice league, justice league approaches black Adam. They're like, Hey, you're like, it's like the guy in the meeting that like screws up, but he accidentally does something really good. And they're like, you should, how can we now save us from, you know, the rest of all the bullshit that's happening. But basically they want to seek refuge at Kandak. Right. Cause they're like, uh, you guys, you got some space. We want to, we want to house the remaining refugees there. Yeah. They, they basically just want to bring all the survivors there and yeah. make that kind of the center of humanity. Yep. And, uh, at the end of, at the end of all of it, um, well, they have this conversation and they try to appeal towards the human side of black Adam. So uh, he like powers down, which we haven't seen in a while. I don't think, uh, black Adam actually say the words and, uh, become normal again. I was confused by that because my understanding, mind you, I do not have a strong understanding of uh, Captain a- Captain Marvel, Shazam, yeah. whatever you want to call him. But my understanding is that he couldn't power down because yeah. he, his human body was so old. Yeah, I, I, because he's he's Teth Adam, right? He's, I mean, he's, but I don't know. I mean, it, this yeah. is right. This is trying to put you know logic behind superheroes and. Right. Uh, Egyptian gods, but yeah, that was, that was confusing to me. But it also, like, it was a cool moment. So yeah, yeah, it was surprising. And I don't know if there's like some comic book science that because he never transforms back, so maybe like while you're in your god form, you don't age or something like that. Um, but I don't know. We've all seen the Shazam Wizard looks pretty friggin' old. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that would. Uh... I don't know, for the proper Shazam title, that would make for an interesting uh, storyline with uh, Billy. Billy. Yeah. He stays yeah, young be, forever, you know? Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, yeah, so take our idea, DC. Send us a check. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so the end, I mean, so him him becoming normal, he gets infected uh, going and walking around, taking in the, he wanted to interpret uh, without the wisdom of Solomon or the wisdom of whatever god, Egyptian god he pulls from, uh, and just see his, see his remaining population as just a normal human um, and he gets infected. So now we have zombie, zombie anti-life equation, Black Adam next issue. So I'm sure he's going to be a joy to handle. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ashen, Ashen Thorn number one. Um, this was a, uh, 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 help me out here. Who's the publisher? Uh, Hoy Comics. This is an advanced review um, yeah. that comes out in uh, mid July, I believe. Yeah. So we're not. I'm not going to spoil it, but um, Ash and Thor number one uh, by McCourt and Lee. Uh, solid, solid first issue. I think um, this is a tale of a. It, it's interesting because I don't. You don't see a lot of the times uh, the protagonist is old. You know what I mean? Like a not not like old in the sense of like they they're it's an older person, but like they start before they get these powers, they're they're old and fragile almost. And you know, most most protagonists you see in books are like young and vibrant and full of life or um, strong individuals. But this there's that's this is part of the book, I guess, is that. Um, this woman inherits these powers uh, be, to be a champion against evil, kind of. Um, and she's in her 70s, I think they say, right? Or something like that. Um, and then she she meets like a, a wizard or, or someone to, this, this lady comes to train her with her powers. We find that there's this great evil coming to Earth uh, and she has, to, she has to fight off these monsters. I thought it was a, a cool issue. Uh, did you check it out? I didn't yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was just interesting. Um, there's some cool stuff going on where she's like, you know, has to fight the forces of evil. Uh, and yeah, there isn't that many spoilers in the first issue. It's a solid starting point, I think. And there's there's definitely something there. 
Uh, I also, my last book, I read a full volume of Young Justice, Volume 1. Uh, this whole story arc of Young Justice, uh, basically they're getting the band back together. Uh, and they've add, they added a couple of new... Um, a couple of new people to the lineup. We have Teen Lantern instead of Green Lantern. She's pretty cool. Uh, it's like this teenager that hacks a power battery and like the device she makes to wield the um, Green Lantern is pretty cool. Uh, and then we have uh, Jenny Hex instead of Jonah Hex. It's like, it's Jonah Hex's like yeah. descendant, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so I mean, the whole the whole six issues revolves around most of the Young Justice ends up in Gemworld for some reason. Um, they were all brought to Metropolis. Some of them remember being in Young Justice before, and some of them don't. And that gets related to what's happening in the Gem world. And I don't really want to get into Gem. I mean, you could get really in big with this Gem science stuff. That's like a mixture of like magic and physics. If you want to buy all that crap, um, I think it's cool to see the champions of the Gem worlds. Like there's Opal and Amethyst, and I think that's all cool. Like. Um, I'm a big fan of like, of societies or not societies, but like groups, you know, like the Green Lantern Corp and, uh, like colored, uh, yeah, like Power Ranger style stuff. I like that. <laughs> but anyways, uh, it was a solid issue. It, it, by the end of it, we get the Young Justice together. Um, and it feels like they're going to go off and do adventures. And I think I, I also have Amethyst volume one that I have to read for Ge or Gem World. That were, and I think somehow those books tie in together because it's like Bendis is, kind of thing for gem world at a time and um but that, i think that's how you do it like you send you send a group of heroes to gem world you don't make a book about gem world you know what i mean it's not like <laughs> i don't I, they tried that early on with like uh new 52 and it didn't really work out yeah i know she was supposed to be a big deal in new 52 <laughs> yeah it's a lot of things were, but, um yeah so it's solid i'm gonna i'm gonna pick up the next volume young justice so i, I heard good things about it Okay, so um, I'll start my DC dailies. Uh, I kept I'm still reading Swamp Thing: New Roots. Uh, I mean, the book's really great. It's Mark Russell telling a environmentalist story, um, and I, I highly suggest it. It's some of the best Swamp Thing I've read. Eh, I'd say it's better than Snyder's Run. Um, yeah, I did really love Snyder's Run. So, uh, but I definitely wow. suggest checking those out. Yeah, they're only yeah. they're only a buck, like. Uh, and then also in that is I read DCs. We talk about that. Um, oh, and since apparently Mark Russell is writing everything in DC Daily, um, I checked out the Harley Quinn book he did. Harley Quinn, Make Him Laugh, number one. I didn't even know he did one. Um, it, it, it's still, uh, I can't do it. Like, I yeah. I didn't enjoy it. I'm sure Harley fans might like it. It's It's well written. But it's just the character doesn't do it for me. I mean, I just can't. Um, he tries some. Okay. He tries some cool things, like having her be a psychiatrist in the beginning and talk about like you know taking side gigs with other villains. But all in all, like it just ends up being like running flat for me. It's. Mm -hmm. Um, and then let's see, uh, another review copy from Ahoy Billionaire Island number two. Um, won't get too much into it, but it just continues that story. And definitely, if you haven't checked out Billionaire Island, uh, try to grab a copy of number one, and then issue two will be out July 1st. It's a great book. Um, it seems like this is the Mark Russell Power Hour, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he he's the writer of this one, too. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, Moving away from Mark Russell, uh, Batman, the adventure continues. I read part four and five. Oh, I um, on that. and speaking of Firefly, he's in that, um, we kind of get the idea of what Deathstroke's plan is and he uses Firefly to, uh, get an idea of how Batman attacks the situation. And then we also find out that there's somebody else behind the scenes that hired Deathstroke. Uh oh. Good book. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, the boys, dear Becky, number one. So we all know I went on a trip and read the boys all the way through and yep. the new issue came out this week or last week. And, uh, it was interesting. It's mostly, uh, so the first half of the book I really liked because it's just, uh, Huey and his, uh, friend, Bobby, the, uh, oh man, I'm zoning on her. Uh, I can't 
Okay. I don't I didn't even know this was a book coming out. Where does it take place in the timeline? After everything. So it's oh, years okay. after. So it's basically if that happened in real time, this is happening today. Mm-hmm. But it's uh Wow, I'm so mad. But it's, it's his friend back from Ireland. So mm-hmm. uh, Huey and his girlfriend ran around the world, and then they came back. And they're kind of having a fight about – and I really, like, connect with Huey in this because it's Huey and them fighting about, you know, like, uh, how the nature of, like, PC has gone too far. And he's like, I'm not this and I'm not that. And, uh, you know, just all these different – ideas that um are thrown out there about kind of the pc culture and the cancel culture and all this stuff it seems like warren ellis really just kind of or no garth ennis is the garth writer ennis is just fed it's up. it's garth ennis kind of like writing his way through his feelings there and yeah, i yeah. i personally really connected with it but then you get into the book and huey finds a package at his door and it's a butcher's wife's old journal and butcher has written a passage in there and we're kind of getting chunks of that passage and it's a uh, butcher kind of writing through his feelings of some of the things he did before Huey ever joined the gang. Mm-hmm. So it seems like they're going to explore a specific event that happened and how it kind of relates back to butcher's wife's death. Oh, um, cool. It was a good first issue, but it, it was missing some of that gravitas that the boys had of yeah. punching Superman. That's why I must have like I must have heard about this coming out, and I I think I'm gonna like I'm gonna ease into it. You know what I mean? It's like we definitely talked about it, and when yeah. we did, I hadn't read the boys yet, so I was kind of disinterested or didn't care. But now that I've gone through and read it all recently, it kind of comes out at the perfect time for me. Right. Um, and then I got my copy of Pop Kill from my uh, the Kickstarter. Cool. So this was the espionage book about the battle between two soda companies. Yeah, I remember. Um, <laughs> this, and this was like you were like, I need to read this. I mean, I had to. It's just it's not even that yeah. I wanted to. I had to. It had yeah. everything that Chris loves. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's fun. It's so the two soda companies are run by competing brothers who are trying to find ways to one up each other in the market. Mm-hmm. And this guy the James Bond S character is kind of caught in the middle of it and he has to go on a mission and and his final mission to kind of get out of his contract is to find this woman who is a scientist that works for the other uh, company that's going to create a carbonation that never goes flat (laughs) and it's going to revolutionize the soda industry. It's goofy, but he ends up like hitting on her and trying to like convince her this and that. And it just has all that espionage that I love. Uh, it's got you know wacky corporate villains. Mm-hmm. Um, if you like James Bond or that you know style of super spy stuff, I suggest it. It's, I thought it was really well written. Cool. The first issue was like fifty pages. Oh wow! That's so it, it's a read. That's a lot. Um, so that was all my digital stuff. Uh, I'll jump through these real quick. This is my pull list from the shop. Uh, Batman Superman number nine, start of a new storyline. Uh, I really like it because it's kind of tapping into a supervillain from Superman that's come to Gotham and is trying to get Batman to help him with a uh, a crime that he's not a part of. He's trying to rehabilitate himself, and he thinks that the detective is the best person to help him, and then everything goes wrong. Of course it does. Um it was really good. Uh, Aquaman number 59. I, I love Aquaman. It's it's a good Aquaman book. If you don't like Aquaman, don't read it. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. We talked about like Shazam. Aquaman. Yeah, Shazam. Uh, and then my last book is Action Comics 1022. And your talk about Young Justice is perfect because this is taking up on that story of Connor Kent and how he fits into everything. So Connor comes to Superman is like, I'm Connor Kent. I am a clone. That's a mixture of you and Lex Luthor. Mm-hmm. Um, and Connor kind of remembers his background of on his earth. Superman takes him to mom, and pa, and they raise him as their own. So Superman's trying to figure out what the hell this is all about, who he is, where he came from. Because Connor can't even remember what Earth he's from or if it even exists anymore. And he takes him to Mom and Pa, and Mom and Pa remember him. 
So now Superman's super confused because he's sitting there going, I don't remember a damn thing. Right. Mom and Pa remember you. They're sitting there hugging you. You remember them. What the fuck's going on? So there's yeah. some sort of multiverse problem here with Connor. And it just is super interesting to me to see how they're going to fix this and how it's all going to come together. Cool. Um, and probably going to answer some questions. <laughs> Yeah. with some of the timeline issues moving forward dc's like we don't really know how to answer all this yet so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah dc's uh they're like wait that dr manhattan story didn't clear everything up uh-oh <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh uh, yeah no who knows what's <laughs> going on with gen 5 or whatever g yeah. or 5g 5g Oh, They're probably trying to scare themselves away from 5G because it started the coronavirus. Yep. Anyways. No. But, uh... <laughs> now we come full circle. Oh, boy. I'm sorry, everybody. I had to make that joke. Yep. But that was everything. I read a lot. <laughs> mm-hmm. A lot of Mark Russell. Yeah. But, uh, Mike, where can people find you on that internet? They can find me at Fortress Ricker on Twitter. Where can they find you and the show? They can find me at Fortress Chris on Twitter or at chrisrunt.com. That's C H R I S R U N D T.com. And, of course, you can find the show at fortresscomicnews.com or on any podcatcher that you may enjoy. Uh, if you are listening to us on one of those podcatchers, give us a five star review. It helps us reach more ears and makes Mike a happy camper. Uh, if you are watching us on YouTube, to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below. And if you would like to support the show even further, you can go to patreon.com slash Fortress Comic News, where for a dollar you can make Mike happy. I don't know. Two dollars, you can get the Bat Friends three days early. Two dollars makes me double happy. It does. So everybody, thank you so much for listening, and we will see you all next week. <laughs>